Hey guys, it's Mark from Migraine Professional. As you know, I used to have migraines and headaches. I used to be chronically ill and now I help those with headaches. I help them recover. I teach them those things that they won't learn from their doctor um, in terms of nutrients and gut healing and hormones and all of these different areas that are not properly addressed teach them how to deal with them and Migrant Professional is this way for me to share this information with all of you. So today we are going to be talking about the process by which the gut breaks down creating migraines and headaches. And so the gut is massive. It contains the majority of our immune system and a massive part of our nervous system because it needs to be so tightly regulated because there's so much going on here. So this is the tube from our mouth to our butt. It's one long tube that contains and, and, and regulates the interaction with our environment because this is where we are ingesting everything. This is the biggest place where we interact with our environment. And so it's permeable because it is kind of always trying to maintain a balance between um, staying regulated enough, staying defended enough, but also being able to take in all these nutrients. So in medical literature, the inside of the gut is actually called the outside of our body because it is not until something gets through the gut wall into our bloodstream, into our lymphatic system that it counts as inside the body. And so inside of our gut, we actually have 100 trillion bacteria and up to of a, a thousand trillion viruses living in symbiosis or what should be symbiosis. So in this constant flux that is maintaining our health, feeding us nutrients, keeping us safe, uh, keeping us protected from parasites. But when this kind of bond starts to break down, we start to run into issues. And so the way we can think of our intestines is like a tube. It is a, a long tube and inside of it, on the wall of the intestines, if we kind of zoom in, there are these villi. Now these villi are finger-like projections. And so they are there to increase the surface area of the gut and to allow for absorption. So on the surface of these villi, there are all these little um, cells that are constantly absorbing nutrients, trying to take in nutrients to sort of transport into the body so that we can use these nutrients and, and live happy, healthy, fulfilled lives, maintain our, our gut health and our hormone health and our brain health and our um, immune system and our inflammation levels and all of these things are regulated by the nutrients that we are taking in. And so what happens in a severe gut illness like celiac disease is those finger-like projections, they start to be broken down by the gluten, by the um, sort of immune reaction to the gluten. They start to be broken down. And so they're, they're stunted, they're stumped. So you cannot absorb nutrients properly. And then there starts to be this massive kind of breakdown with celiac. And that's why many celiac patients don't uh, live very long. So with the gut, we want to understand that when we are, when there is a balance, our body is constantly able to sort of secrete enzymes and then break down our food properly into its tiniest little pieces, into its vitamins and minerals, its fatty acids, its amino acids, its sugars, and it can absorb those. It can use those. It can't use the bigger particles like the proteins, the fats, and the carbohydrates. It needs to break them down into amino acids, fatty acids, and sugars. So it uses enzymes to do this. They're like little clippers that are breaking down these big, big particles so that we can absorb them. What happens and what is commonly known in the migraine community with all of the migraine diets is that when we start to sort of when the gut starts to break down, when we start to go through the process of, of damage in the gut, inflammation in the gut, when we go through something like a traumatic brain injury or massive stress, something like a divorce or um, a, a, like a spouse leaving us or, or um, a loved one dies or some massive stress or we lose a job, then this actually affects our gut as well as our brain because of the vagus nerve. So the vagus nerve goes from, from our brain down and it goes into all of our organs. And so it's constantly sending signals between our, our, our gut and our brain and our brain and our gut. So anything that's happening to our brain is gonna happen to our gut. Anything that's happening to our gut is gonna happen to our brain. We'll talk about that in a second. 
But when we start to develop things like food sensitivities, when we go through massive stressors, when we get parasite infections, when we get dysbiosis, which is an imbalance of the, the gut bacteria, um, the bacteria inside of our gut, when we uh, have a low fiber diet or we have a la really big lack of diversity in our diet, when we have um, things like like uh, when we eat lots and lots of gluten, when we eat lots of alcohol, when we have toxicity, um, any all different kinds of toxicity can do it if it is built up enough and if we're not able to process it through our liver properly, um, then our gut starts to break down. So the most common thing is that first off our microbiome, which is the bacterial balance in our gut starts to change. So like our, our common bellwethers like methanobrever, uh, disulfo vibrio, uh, these bacteria that are constantly maintaining or keeping our gut healthy, these ratios start to change. Their populations start to go down. We start to get less and less of them. And then, so we have these on top of these villi, we have this mucus layer. This mucus layer is constantly protecting us um, and it's, it, it contains our immune system our secretory immunoglobulin A, um, which is part of our immune system and actually protects our gut from all of these bacteria and all of these things going on inside of the gut. So this starts to break down, our immune system starts to break down there, the mucus layer starts to break down, and then eventually these villi, these finger-like projections that are there for absorbing nutrients, they start to be injured. They start to be hurt. And so inside of these villi, we actually have what is called zonulin. So zonulin is a chemical that when released from these finger-like projections, it will enter the cells on the gut lining, inside of the gut lining. And so these cells will then um, sort of pull away from each other. And what was before um, between the cells, what was before a very, very tiny gap between the cells, turns into a bigger and bigger and bigger gap. And this is what we call leaky gut or a permeable gut. And so before it, you would need these, you would need to go through the villi, go through the cells in the gut to enter the lymphatic system, to enter the blood. Um, and this would be very tightly regulated by those cells. You can't just get through the, get through the gut and into the body. But when these finger-like projections start to break down from these stresses that I mentioned, and the zonulin gets released into the cells, and they pull away from each other, leaving these gaps, then you can get bigger molecules starting to get through. Then you can get protein particles. You can get protein particles from different foods. Like let's say you eat some tomato, you don't digest it very well, you don't break it down very well. These molecules of tomato can get through that leaky gut, they can get into your bloodstream. And when it gets into your bloodstream, it can start being targeted. So it can start being targeted by the immune system and then the immune system can become sensitive to it. So it can start developing um, sort of antigens or antibodies to these antigens in the food. And so then these antibodies will constantly be looking for this food and then anytime we eat it, if we have a leaky gut, if we eat that food, these antibodies will attack and we'll have a massive inflammatory cascade that can not only affect our gut, but affect our entire circulation and everything our circulation touches, which is everything. Even our brains, are, um, the inflammatory levels in our brains, and these can cause, if we have, especially if we have a, um, a leaky brain, which is the, the, the barrier that sort of protects our brain, if it has become leaky, then these antibodies can get through, and then we are creating massive amounts of inflammation. So obviously the enzymes, first off, when the enzymes start to break down within these villi, within the gut, then we can't break down simple food molecules like tyramine, like histamine, and we know from all the migraine diets, the migraine food, food lists, the migraine diet lists, which are so incredibly abundant, it's ridiculous, that when these enzymes break down like diamine oxidase, when our gut is not healthy and it cannot break down the histamines and the tyramines, then we start getting big problems with these high histamine, high tyramine foods like the fermented food, foods, cured foods, aged foods, smoked foods, things like that. 
So that's kind of the first part of it. And then these sensitivities. So like I talked about, when the immune system starts to recognize these food particles, these big food particles that are getting through the gut and into the bloodstream, and it starts attacking them because it thinks, oh, this shouldn't be here. This is a, a very big molecule. It can't use big molecules. It needs the tiny, tiny amino acids, the tiny fatty acids, the tiny sugars to be able to use those. Then it starts to target those foods and then we develop food sensitivities. So we always wanna make sure that we are healing our gut whenever we're dealing with massive amounts of food sensitivities. Especially if you go and you get tested for food sensitivities, you can end up with 50 different foods that are sensitive. And so then what do you do? You cannot remove all of these different foods. You need it for nutrients. You need it for, for a diversity in your microbiome. So you have to make sure that you heal the gut and then, of course, when the gut is breaking down, when there is damage to the gut, let's say from an infection or from stress or from these food particles getting through or food, food not being digested properly or a microbiome imbalance, um, then the levels of inflammation in our gut will go up because our body is constantly trying to fight something. It's constantly trying to pair and these inflammatory cytokines, which is uh, inflammatory messenger molecules, they will go up. And then, especially if we have a leaky blood brain barrier, but even if we don't, these inflammatory cytokines can get through into the brain space and start creating inflammation in the brain. They can aggravate any inflammation that is already there. So if we're trying to recover, it can aggravate it and send us into another spiral. And then of course the vagus nerve. So like I talked about this nerve that goes from the gut, uh, the brain to the gut, the gut to the brain, and is constantly kind of interacting with the two. If we have a traumatic brain injury, within minutes, our gut can, will start to break down because of this connection with, through the vagus nerve. If we are experiencing a parasitic infection, which is very, very common in the first world. We think, oh no, oh, we're in the first world. It's uh, very clean. We don't get parasite infections, but they're actually very, very common, especially fungal infections. Um, if we're experiencing an infection in our gut, then through the vagus nerve, this inflammation will be communicated to the brain and create uh, sort of an inflammatory cascade inside of the brain aggravating any of those problems that we're trying to heal from, that we're trying to recover from, repair from. So it's really important that we're, when we're dealing with the brain, we are also dealing with the gut, we are healing the gut. And this is what we so commonly see inside of our, our sort of clinic, is that you wanna make sure that you're healing the gut because the gut is a massive source of strain. One of the first places that the that sort of gut issues will destroy is, is uh, our hormones and our nervous system. So we will feel burnt out, we will feel fatigued, our menstrual cycles won't be functioning properly, we won't be able to uh, function the world properly. That's one of the first places it goes when there's this massive stress on our gut from our gut going through whatever the problem is. And so yeah, if you wanna know more about the gut and sort of that gut-brain connection and how foods are a massive problem, um, if you're not digesting them, if they're getting through your gut, if you're not properly regulating your microbiome, uh, if you're not getting the nutrients you need to repair your brain properly and, and maintain um, healthy inflammatory levels, then make sure you check out the Food Triggers Guide. The Food Triggers Guide is a very uh, simple step-by-step -step guide, but we go through sort of everything you kind of need to know and a couple of studies that have been done on foods with migraine sufferers and how foods are really a massive part of the migraine puzzle. And so then it leaves you with a step-by-step -step of how you can go about eating and changing your diet and understanding what it is that is creating all of this kind of mayhem from the foods that you're eating, how to go about dealing with that, how to go, to, how to go about uh, sort of healing your gut and, and, and recovering some of these food sensitivities because you don't wanna, at the end of the day, you don't wanna have to remove all of your sensitive foods you want to be able to eat a wide variety of foods and that's what you should be able to do. When you heal the gut properly, that's what you can do. So let me know in the comments below, do you notice uh, your gut problems being connected to your migraines or headaches or inflammatory problems or any other issues you have? Do you notice it stemming from your gut or the foods you're eating or any symptoms you're getting from your gut? Let me know in the comments below, thanks. Hey, it's Mark from MyGrownProfessional.com. Thank you for watching this video. 
Make sure to subscribe in the bottom left corner. And if you want to learn more about migraines and headaches than you've ever known before, and understand what causes them, what creates them, and what you can do about them, make sure to go to migraineprofessional.com. Thanks.